Hey, what's up, YouTube? Thought I'd share uh, my Ruger Mini 14 and how, I, and how I personally have it set up. All the talk about assault weapons is in the air still. And um, this is one of the rifles that's in question whether it's an assault rifle or not, according to Diane Feinstein's bill on gun control and weapons, assault ban weapons or whatever. As we all know, this weapon operates the same as any other semi-automatic weapon. It's not full auto, it just looks scary. So, when it looks scary, they want to band it. The non-bandable semi-automatic version of the Ruger Mini 14 functions completely the same as any other Mini 14 except for it's inside different furniture. When I say furniture I mean it don't have a pistol grip, it don't have an adjustable slide bar stock. It's in a wooden traditional looking um, Mini 14 you know non-threatening furniture. So when you take the rifle itself out and you put it inside something like this it's mean looking and it's an assault weapon but anyway I this is the uh, Mini 14 tactical version with the ATI adjustable six position stock um, guardrails everywhere I'll go over everything real quick with you but this is the way I bought the gun besides the extras uh, you can go on Ruger's website and see this is how I have it set up I thought I'd go over it with you since uh, Assault weapons is so big in the air. I've had this rifle for over a year now, and I've shot it, I mean, several, I don't know, 1,500 to 2,000 rounds. It's a, it's a beautiful rifle. It functions perfectly. I've only had slight problems with the Tapco mags a couple times, and that was with steel ammunition. The Ruger factory mags have worked flawlessly with steel and brass ammo. Basically, anything I fed it, it, it ate it. Um, let me show you the rifle. I'm going to take it up close. I'm going to sit down and show you how it functions and so forth. This is how I have it set up. It's got the flashy presser on the front. It's got the post. I got a uh, BSA 160 uh, lumen uh, tack light on it on the side here. I got a forward pistol grip. That is, you can retract and hold on to it. Here's my BSA light, and I have the pistol grip uh, uh, trigger right here. Uh, I forget what the hell they call it, a remote control, basically. You press on it right here, and it has three different functions. I have it set up for right-hand carry, like this, so I can hold the forward grip and press the remote. The light comes on. It's got three different settings. But it works out well. I got a thumb button right here, so if I want to drop it into a bipod stance, I could drop it down to a bipod. The grip is removable off the bottom rail. I still have the top rail, which is nothing on right here. And another side rail over here because I want to mount something else. I got uh, sling mounts right here. Sling mount right here. Sling mount over here on this side. Sling mount on this side. And another sling mount down here. So lots of areas where I could put different options on this. Like I said earlier, it's, it's an adjustable slot, an adjustable stock. You can put it in different positions wherever you want it. It's also got this rubberized recoil pad back here. It says ATI on it. This is a great stock, guys. Plus, it's also something you can do with this. You can't do with with an AR, which is one of the reasons why I picked up the Mini 14. Is you can go ahead and close this off. It locks. You have a pistol grip right here, so you can actually operate this in tight situations like this. And as you know, the 223 5.56 round isn't going to kill your recoil. So if I had to go through the house, I can go ahead and operate it like this.
This is the rifle. It's also got an adjustable cheek well right here. You can raise and lower this cheek well. You can see the adjustment bolts right here. So if then I have the uh, Nikon. Take off the dust covers here. Well, first I have the G, G, and G. Uh, one of the problems with the Ruger Mini 14 is trying to find a good sight for it. Yeah, but if you go out and you get this aftermarket part by G, G, and G, I forget exactly what G, G, and G stands for. You get this aftermarket rail, and you can put on side. You can put you can put the attach the rail directly to the stock uh, ring mount points that come with the, with the Ruger Mini 14, and you can put whatever rail you want up, up here on top. And I got the right now. I got the Nikon P223, four power scope on here. To get a good look at that, you're not gonna be able to see through it, but it's got a nice reticle, really good eye relief, and it works out really good. It's not a super powerful scope, but if I was gonna use this, I'm not looking to get out to 200 yards with it. I'm looking to get out to about 75 to 100, and I can do that adequately with this. But that's the rifle, close up look. And don't have, like on the ARs, the big piston spring, I forget exactly what it's called offhand, that come back here so you can actually fold this stock up. Shoots the same rounds as the AR, but it's not an AR. This is the version with a thicker barrel. So I didn't find the need to put an AccuStrut on here because it's pretty accurate out the box the way it is without the AccuStrut since this is the, a newer version that's been a couple years older, I mean newer. Obviously the weapon safety check. I wouldn't be doing this without it just for your safety Nancy's out there. And this is the Tapco Gen 2 mags. I actually modified these a little bit because they were a bit tight going in and out. So I roughed it down the, uh, the edges a little bit and took off that black coating and it runs and it gets, goes, goes in and out real easy now. You load it up just like an AR, just like an AK, has a drop down button right here. Try to look through the viewfinder, that locks in there good. You can actually do fast mag changes on this if you get good with it. When you have, the, when you have your rifle up, you can actually hold one mag in your hand. I'm not going to do it because I want my mag drop on the ground. But you can actually hit this button right here, push that button forward, and it will drop the magazine with that one swipe. And then as you have the magazine right here and you push off on it, you can actually take this magazine and put right in. So you can actually have a fast mag change without a push button. It takes some practice, but you can get used to it. And that's another unloaded magazine just to show you. Now, Ruger also makes factory 30 round mags, just like the tap goes, the 30 round mags. And they also make 20 round mags and 5 round mags. And I think 10 round mags too. I don't have anything smaller than 20. But since reviewing purposes, I'm not going to be putting a loaded magazine in here for now. But that's the operations of the gun. You have a safety right here in the front, just like every other Mini 14. So you don't have a switch up here like an AR. When you load it up, you push that safety forward and your finger's already on the trigger. You don't have to mess around with no button. Those are the comparisons to an AR. I think ARs are great too. Mini 14s are just as good in my opinion. Uh, you may not have as many. Close that bolt up. You may not have, right now, a lot of people are talking about the assault weapons ban, but I could easily take everything out of this here AR, out of this here Mini 14, and put inside of a regular web, uh, Hogue stock or wooden stock, and people wouldn't be nowhere near as afraid of it. And if it comes up towards a semi uh, assault weapons ban, but there's no semi-automatic ban, I take the furniture off of this and put it back and put it inside of something else, and I still and I can still legally own my rifle, 
without it being an assault weapon. It's stupid crazy guys, I know. But I uh, just wanted to go over this real quick with you. Give you a good look at it. How I have it set up. Like I said, I have a 4 times Nikon P223 uh, uh, rail on here. I got a tack light. I got a foldable bipod. And you saw how everything's set up on it. I think it works well for me the way it is. And I wanted to give you guys a look. This is your best AR alternative, in my opinion. If you're looking to shoot the 223 5.56. Yes, this is a 223, uh, but it is rated for 5.56 ammo. I've put in hundreds of rounds through it, no problem. And uh, looking to get one of these. This particular rifle, without any of the extras on here, cost me 600 bucks. The bipod. Uh, four grip cost me, I think, 25. The scope, I think, cost me 125 or 150. The light cost me 60. So I have about, uh, I have well, very well, I have a lot less than a thousand dollars invested into this, and I would have no problem, you know, having this as my bug out zombie apocalypse uh, uh, 223 platform rifle. Hope you guys enjoyed. I don't want to make the video too long because there's already been so much done on a Mini 14 as it is. I just wanted to show you how I have mine set up and um, I think it works out well. Rate, comment, subscribe. Um, I think I have one small video of me shooting it without any of the furniture on it. because I And also my, my daughter shooting it without any of the furniture on it. Uh, but this is it. You guys take care. Oh, hitting my camera. <laughs> have a good day. Bye.